Hello, I'm Bridget and I'm a nutrition scientist at the British Nutrition Foundation. This podcast is all about energy density of foods and satiety. We'll explain more about energy density later, but first, what is satiety? So we all know the feeling of hunger that we get before eating. And once we've eaten something, we feel full and don't want to eat again for some time. And this feeling of fullness is called satiety and it plays an important role in how much energy we consume. If we feel really full or satiated, we won't want to eat for a period of time and we may even eat less at our next meal. But if the foods we choose aren't particularly filling, we may feel hungry more quickly, snack or even eat more at the next meal. The way we live at the moment makes it very easy for us to consume too much energy from food and drink. There are lots of tasty foods available wherever we go and we don't need to do a lot of physical activity to go about our daily lives. This, as well as other factors, means that many people are becoming overweight and obese. But when people try to lose weight by eating less, they often feel really hungry and deprived. Eating foods that make us feel fuller or more satiated might be one way we could help people to control how much energy they consume and to control their body weight. The amount of food people eat each day has been studied, and an interesting finding is that people eat about the same weight of food, but not the same amount of energy every day. This is because for a particular weight of food, different foods can have very different energy values, and the amount of energy a food has per gram is known as its energy density. So here we've got some examples of how different the energy content of foods can be. Um, I'm going to show you some carrots, some bread and some peanuts. And you can see that the portion sizes of these are very different, but in fact their energy content is about the same, 450 kilojoules. So carrots have got a really low energy density, so you need a lot of carrots to give you 450 kilojoules. So here I've got a portion of carrots, and as you can see, these carrots weigh 310 grams for the 450 kilojoule portion. So bread has a medium energy density, and two slices of bread, which weigh about 50 grams, also provide 450 kilojoules, the same amount as the carrots. So peanuts have a really high energy density, and so this means you only get a small portion for the 450 kilojoules that we had for both the carrots and the bread. But as you can see, the energy density of a food, that is how much energy it has per gram, seems to have a big effect on how much we can eat of that food for the same amount of energy. And this energy density seems to be important in how full people feel after eating. Lower energy density foods seem to cause a stronger feeling of fullness than the same amount of energy from higher energy density foods. So, by eating a diet that's got lots of low energy density foods, you can trick your body into feeling fuller, even if you're not consuming more energy. And this could help people who are trying to lose some weight or to maintain a healthy weight. The energy density of foods can be very low, low, medium or high. Examples of very low energy density foods are salad leaves, vegetables like broccoli, fruit and some soups. Examples of low energy density foods are pasta, baked beans, breakfast cereals with milk, low fat yoghurt, canned tuna in water and ham. Examples of medium energy density foods are salmon, pizza, bread and steak. Examples of high energy density foods are cheese, peanuts and chocolate. Changing the kinds of foods and ingredients you use in a dish can have a big effect on its energy density. Here are some pictures of meals that we've prepared. These two dishes are both spaghetti bolognese and they both contain 2,200 kilojoules. But, as you can see, the one on the left is a much bigger portion than the one on the right. This is because this version has a lower energy density. These two desserts both contain 900 kilojoules. But, because the one on the left has a lower energy density, you can have a much bigger portion for the same amount of energy. We'll talk more about how we did this in the next part of the podcast. But for now, let's see what some people think about these dishes. I think I would go for the one on the left because there's more food on that plate. I like the cheese, but definitely the left one. The one on the left, I think there's a lot more berries in there and it will make me feel much fuller than the one on the right, even though that's got the cream. I think it has to be the one on the left. It's probably no surprise that the people we asked thought the bigger portion would make them feel more full. And research has shown that this is actually true. 
Bigger portions of low energy density foods can make you feel more full than smaller portions of higher energy density foods, even if they contain the same amount of energy. So, eating a lower energy density diet can make you feel fuller even though you're not consuming more energy, and this can help people who want to control their weight to eat less without feeling hungry all the time. So, in summary, satiety is the sensation of fullness after eating, and a strong feeling of satiety can help to control how much energy we consume. Energy density is the amount of energy a food contains per gram. Foods with a lower energy density tend to be more satiating than foods with a high energy density. Low energy density foods include fruit and vegetables and some soups. These help to bulk up your diet as well as providing important nutrients. They're complemented by medium energy density foods such as lean protein, fish and bread. By building your diet around low and medium energy density foods, it's possible to eat sufficient energy but still feel full and be able to resist snacking between meals.